to explain further stuff you need to know. Very helpful at dinner parties this weekend. Dr Adam Lockyer from the US Study Centre at the University of Sydney. Yeah, thank, be here. thank you for coming along. Now, I've, that's, that's the second story in two days. Mm -hmm. Doesn't seem to be any movement, but to be fair, this happened on the debt crisis a couple of years ago. It happened on the fiscal cliff. They went mm -hmm. actually a few minutes over. I mean, people now just generally accept they do all this posturing and at the 11th hour it changes. This one doesn't look right, or are we imagining? Mm -hmm. Are they just playing with this. Well, it's it's now become the Congress that has cried wolf one too, <laughs> exactly. once too many times. And now people don't believe that the doomsday is going to happen on Friday. This uh, one seems to be a little bit different, however, because I think the worst kept secret in Washington is that both sides secretly want this thing to happen. Um, the Republicans see this as a way of cutting government spending across the board, which is what they've been after for a long time. And the Democrats um, like the sequester also because the public is blaming the Republicans for this occurring. So they win you know, on the political stakes, but the Republicans are, are, are appealing to their base and they also think they're winning as well. It's interesting the winners and losers politically in it because I, I watched an analysis of just who was responsible for the sequester, which came out of the last debt crisis mm -hmm. they couldn't settle. And while it was the Democrat, while it was President Obama who put this proposal up, it was based on an old Reagan era proposal. Yeah, that's right. So the, um, the heritage of this particular crisis, it goes all the way back to October 2011 when the debt ceiling failed to get cleared through Congress because the House De uh, Republicans wouldn't allow the debt ceiling to be because raised. Because they're dysfunctional. They're the dysfunctional <laughs> and they, they didn't want the debt ceiling to be raised without corresponding cuts to government spending. Now, neither side could decide on where those, those uh, spending cuts were going to come from. And so they put in this ticking time bomb, which was supposed to uh, hurt both the Democrats and the Republicans equally. So it was going to come six... So. But no, no, no. I was going to say, but I mean, but what we're that, that's where we got to. Mm -hmm. And the, but there's going to be draconian cuts. I'm just trying to just tell us what it means if it does go ahead on Friday. I mean, you talk about both sides and it does look like they're ready to do it. I mean, yeah. what is the harm on having the cuts? I mean, they're very, very draconian for the, uh, the defence industry, mm -hmm. which Republicans don't like. But what harm in cutting defence spending? Yeah, well, this is, uh, this is one of the arguments where even the Republicans don't really think that cutting at defence spending may not be all that bad. And it depends for how long, too. So in the legislation, it's going to be $1.2 trillion over 10 years, which is a lot. And that would make do serious damage to the US economy. However, in the first year, it's only going to be about uh, 800, uh, sorry, uh, $85 billion. And so over 12 months, this is something that the US economy can probably take. Um, so it's so it really because depends Because some people think it could send them back into recession if they're too draconian. It is, and but this is, depends how, how long the cuts go for. No one thinks that these cuts are going to be implemented and then it's going to stay in place for, for a decade. It's, if it's going to be in place for a month, two months, six months, the damage it does to the US economy is more about the length that the cuts are in place rather than on Friday itself. I mean, it's ironic because basically they cannot get their act together themselves, so why not let the automatic, robotic, virtual Congress do it themselves? Because it is just it's using like a... like an algorithm. Oh, yeah, but it's just going to be across the board and it's not a delicate... They, they're not using a scalpel, they're using an axe to well, cut these spending. These people can't use and... a scalpel. And, of course, the things that we're talking about, defence cuts, I mean, I'm more mm -hmm. worried it's going to add flight time if you're in the US because fewer air traffic controllers, you'll be circling. You mentioned the national parks closing so a lot of things people will start to realize this isn't a joke anymore that's right and it has to do with uh, so after the, the on Friday those uh, cuts aren't going to kick in straight away what's going to happen is that it, how it impacts a um, air traffic controllers will be how the aviation authority is able to rejig its finances all of a sudden it's not getting as much money so where is it going to cut from uh, if it can sort of if an agency is able to think quickly on its feet, jiggle its finances, maybe the impact won't be as bad. But if the, an agency isn't able to think quickly, then we get this across the board, um, re really bad cuts. If is it like the debt crisis and the fiscal cliff that they could go over slightly, dip their toe over and then Monday come back with a compromise? Or once it starts, it, or, or what you're saying, it could go a few months or at any point if they came to their senses, could they stop? Congress makes the laws. And so they could stop it at any point? Congress can come back and they can pass a new set of laws and just stop the sequestration at any time. It has to do with, well, 
that deal and that, that the deal making process about well if you're going to change uh, the uh, sequestration on defence well we want it changed so it's on just social be the services same horse trading and, and whatever but the other thing to remember of course is this isn't the debt ceiling crisis we've still got that one to come haven't we yeah so the debt they only put that off for a few the months. debt ceiling was kicked down the road and that's going to happen again on May 17 around about May 17 so what happened we had the fiscal cliff on the 1st of January which was the um, expiry of Bush era tax cuts the debt ceiling and sequestration all happening at the same time all they did was break it into three separate and parts. And kick some of them down, so we've got the sequester first. But, you know, if you want, if you're going to miss viewers and, 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 you know, your monthly US debt crisis, there will be another one in May. Is there anything up until then, or will we have a bit of a... I suppose we'll be seeing the results of the we'll sequester. If we'll see again. the sequester roll out and see what the outcome's going to be, and that could just roll straight into May. So, plenty more to do. And, uh, look, you know, while I'm being facetious about it, uh, you do see the green shoots of recovery in the US and positiveness. We mm -hmm. don't need anything that would tip them back, you know, confidence back into a recession, do we? Oh, absolutely. And, this, and the US uh, recovery is so fragile at the moment. And even if it doesn't necessarily hit um, the economy in a, a real physical sense, then confidence is certainly going to um, take a hit. I'd like to say we'd hope that they behave like adults, but honestly, you listen to some of that. But the big question is, uh, yes. you probably watched a bit of the Oscars, as you said, forget the sequester, they're all watching the Oscars. That's Your right. view on the host, uh, Seth MacFarlane? Uh, I think we're in a downward spiral now. I think the Oscars is in a death spiral, where, uh, where we have, it's just becoming overly long, and overly bland, and the people come back and criticise the Oscars Michelle for being, Obama couldn't for, even for help being it, could overly she? long and overly bland. And so next next year they don't be criticised. And so it's even longer. In it, I liked Seth MacFarlane's irreverence. I thought he was good. I thought we didn't need Michelle Obama. But there you go. You're right. At least I think everybody stopped for the Oscars. Now they can get back to running the country. Dr. Adam thank Lockyer, you. thank you very much for your time. I have a feeling we'll be talking to you about the sequester and the debt ceiling again very soon. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Adam Lockyer, Dr. Adam Lockyer, US Studies Centre, Sydney University.